All right. So um, we have three people that are playing this game. We have player one, player two, player three. Player three scores if the spinner lands on a three, they get a point. Player two gets a point on two. Player for one gets a point on one. So we have three spinners. We have A, B, and C. So which spinner would lead to a fair game? And what makes a fair game first? What are the two qualities that make a fair game? Garrett? If it's random and has an equal probability. Needs to be random and equal. equal probability. Those are the two. So, Stevie, which one, ha which one has equal probability? Since they're all spinners, we know they're random. Why spinner A? Good. Each person would have a one-third chance. And that's that equal probability. So if I was to choose another spinner and make this game fair, because this is an unfair game and that's an unfair game, how could I make this fair? We know that spinner B is unfair because I have half a chance of getting two and I have a quarter chance of getting one or three. That's, that's not equal opportunity. Patrick. Well, I was saying spinner B, and you can make it fair by if you make the, the number two worth less points than the one above B. Ah, so we know, that's smart, we know we have a two out of four chance. This is our probability to get a two, right? We have two out of four chances. And you're saying, let's make it. Less points. So how much less? I don't know, like a one, three, or one, two. Like a half. Like a half point? Preston says a half point. So let's say each one's a half point. So what's two times a half? One. one. And four times one? one. Okay. So that's a that's a that equals one fourth. If I take my points, multiply it by my chances. I get a one-fourth. Let's take the one. What's my probability here of landing on a one? One-fourth. And if I take a one-fourth and I multiply it by, how much do you get when you land on one? One point. That equals one-fourth. So would that be fair? Yeah. Here, I get a point five but I have twice as many chances. So when I multiply my 0.5, that equals 1 fourth. That's smart. I, I got one. I could also, instead of making points less, I could make them more. Yeah. You were thinking that? Yeah. So what would you do to make it fair? 1 would be worth 1, and 3 is worth 1. So 2, I still get 1 point for getting a 2. So that would still equal two-fourths, but then you're saying I have a one-fourth chance of getting a one or three, multiply that by what? Yeah. Two, and I get two-fourths as well. Those are equal. So I could make it get more. Any other suggestions, Preston? Did you like, so what I was first thinking is that you could have one and three spin twice and two spin one. Yeah, absolutely, because... So if they spin twice, they have a one-fourth chance the first time, right? And I would add another one-fourth chance. That would equal a chance of two-fourths, which is the same chance as someone who has the number two, which is two-fourths. Super smart. Yeah. Super smart. Super smart. Anything else? Any other ideas? Yeah. What I kind of thought is like, what if each player has the same number to land on? So like, it'd be like each player had like two, and if they didn't land on two, then they didn't get any points. Ah, so instead of the player getting signed a number, they get to say their number. Yeah. Well, no, like each player has like four, since two is a bigger chance. Yeah. 
Ah, gotcha. Okay, and if they don't, then they don't get a point. Yeah. Okay. Wait, Mr. Mitch. Yo. How is the spin or B, like, how would the point system work again? With spin or B? Yeah. So, so it's because they have twice as many chance. They have they have a fifty percent chance, right? Yeah. I'm gonna award them fifty percent less because they have twice as many chances to land on that number. Does that make it? Does that make sense? What about spinner C? How can I make spinner C? Oh, M. So you were saying one point for two, two points for, yeah, sorry. One point for two, two points for landing on one, three points for landing on three. What do you guys think? Is that fair? Why don't you think it's fair? Should. Theoretically, it should because what you're saying is if I'm the number two, I have a three six chance, right? There are six pieces. Three of them are my number. So I get one point each. So if I multiply that by one, I have a total chance of three six. Here on number, this is number two, right? Number one. You're saying it has a two-sixth chance, one, two out of six pieces. I'm going to award that person two points. That is four-sixths, slightly more than three-sixths. So then it should be one half for each one. And then if I was number three, I have a one-sixth chance but I award them three points. So those are fair, but one has a one-sixth chance more or greater score, chance of having a... Does it mean it will work out that way? No. No, because it's random. But we know that the probability-wise, it's not equal. Because I have a one-third chance versus um, a one-sixth chance, and it doesn't match up with the points. That's not. That's a smart idea, Anne. I like that, because that's what everyone has said in every class. And it is. It's so close. You don't quite recognize that it is slightly. You have a slightly greater chance of scoring more um, by taking one. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, put this away. This is um, a more difficult. Question has um, some more steps that I'd like you to do. Our homework for tonight, we got number seven on page 61. Should not take you that long, five, ten minutes. Um, where I'm going to come around and I'm going to check question four and five right now. What I would like you to do, so get four or five on your desk. I would like everyone on their homework page, okay, this is what we do every day. I want you to work through this question. This is using the data sets from our homework, but we're answering these two questions. Use the data set from the three spinners. I've already labeled, which was the question on the homework, which data set goes with which spinner. I'm telling you right here what it is. First data set goes with C, second data set with A, third one with B. I've already told you that. You hopefully should have answered that as part of your homework. But what I want you to do is figure out the experimental probability of each number. So I would write down spinner A. What's the experimental um, probability of getting a 1? I go to data set A, 
And I would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? So the experimental probability, and I would have on my paper spinner A, number one, and I could write XP for experimental probability is 7 over 20. And then right after it, what is the theoretical probability of getting 1? Well, I know it's a 1 third. Theoretical probability because I have three pieces. They're all the same. I have a 1 in 3 chance. So I'm going to list... Whoops, and this is for number one. I forgot to put the one there. Now I'm going to do the same thing for two. Same thing for three. First thing I would answer is my experimental probability. So my experimental probability on number two, I go and count. One, two, three, four, five. Is a five out of 20. And my theoretical probability, well, it's exactly the same. It would be one third. So this is what you're going to do for spinner A, spinner B, and spinner C as I'm coming around and checking your homework. Questions about that? All right. Get going on it.
Okay, let's um let's do one of these. Chuck here and this one. Okay. All right, so um spinner C. I have my theoretical probability, my experimental. So we'll start with the theoretical. If I go with number one, what's my theoretical probability of getting a number one? Two, two, six. two six. I got one, two out of six total pieces, and all the pieces are equal. That's theoretical, right? Yep, that's my theoretical. I have a two six chance or a one third chance. I could write it either way. Um, experimental probability, I have to go to my data set. Here is C. There's my data set for C. What was my experimental probability of getting a 1? Julian, for spinner C. You got 5? Yeah. Okay. So it's 5 out of 20, which also equals 1. 
forth. So you can see theoretical probability not too far off from the experimental. What would happen if we kept doing, if we kept spinning? What would happen to this experimental probability? Garrett. We get closer to that, right? It should. Number two, what's my uh, theoretical probability bird for, num for getting a two? Three six. Three six or one half. And what was the experimental probability, Bree? Twelve out of twenty. Okay, which also equals um, three-fifths, not too far off. Because we know if that's three-sixths, that's also one-half. So then it would be dead on. Number three, um, getting a three, there's only one piece out of six, so I have a one-sixth chance. And I had a three out of 20 experimental probability. And here they roll, they spun three only three times. And that is almost a one six. Think about it. One six would be three out of 18. That would be a one six. So this is really close as well. Questions around um, taking data sets and creating your probability experimental? Okay. We're going to be doing some of this today. So that's why I was kind of showing you how to do it. Um, we're going to be playing another game. I like this unit. Lots of games. So, I'll show you this video. And you guys know these videos are super exciting. I know. Don't, hey, don't watch this at home too much. into their columns in any way it chooses. Mm-hmm. How many markers do you get? Twelve. You get twelve markers. Where do you put the markers? Um, Anywhere you want. Okay. So I feel like I should get sued for using the name roller derby. Rule two. Each team rolls a number of keys. The team with the highest roll goes first. Alright. Rule three. Teams take turns rolling the two number cubes. They remove a marker from the column on their board with the same number as the sum of the numbers on the number cubes. Okay. So, what do I do when I roll my two dice? Uh, right. I remove the marker from that sum. So if I roll, if I roll two number cubes and I get a three and a two. What marker would I remove? Five. five. I remove, I go to the five. If there's a marker on there, I would take it off. But you're not going to remove a one, are you? There's like not going to be able to remove a one. Oh, really? Whoa. Trust me, you asked yourself something. If the column is empty, the team does not get to remove a marker. Okay. Rule four. The first team to remove all the markers from its board wins. I know what I'm going to do. I'm putting all of my markers on eight. I'm just shot out of the Interesting way. strategy. <laughs> eight is my lucky number. Well, I'm going to spread all my markers out across the board. Wait, so how do you win? So, how do I win? Putting them on one. No. I want to get rid of all my markers. So, I can't. I get rid of them by rolling two dice and getting a sum. So watch them. They're going to play. I guess you're first. And we're off. A two and a three. Both of the marker on five. What? It's your turn. That was a three and a three. No, that was a two. Double fours for lucky number eight. Oh, I thought you could remove all of them. No. So I only get to... So I only get to remove one oh. at a time. Now, they're not doing something that we will be doing. Your sheet, 
Your sheet looks like this, which I again, so I have to have a plug in. So let's plug it in. So here's my sheet. Roller derby. Okay. So you're going to do this. I would put, if I'm one partner, I'm going to put X or O's, hearts or stars, whatever. When I remove, I just erase it. So if I had, let's say I was O's, and I had O's here, and I roll a four, I would just, a four? I mean a four and a three, I would erase seven. I would erase that marker. The other thing I want you to do is this. Below, just kind of extend these like this. If I roll a 12, I put a tally. Put them in groups of five. five. Don't make them big. So every time we roll, there's a six, tally. And I would erase that one. Then my partner would go. They would roll. They got a seven, tally. So it's going to look like this. Put them in groups of five and have them go down. So it's like one group of five, another group of five. Every time you roll that number, just keep track of it. Every number? Even Every number. Even if that thing is off of it? Even. Even if, yeah, even if your marker is gone. So I, let's say if I roll a two and no one has any markers there, I still, I would, if I got a one and a one, I would still put a mark there. Questions? Yes, can I get something on my wall? One second. Uh, any two? other questions about the game? Do we have to spread them among the... Well, you get to decide where to put them. The idea is you want your markers gone first. Are we going together? I'm going to put mine on six. Yep, eight. tail partner. I'm going to do six, eight, and ten. Okay. Your dice. Up here. Your sheets. Up here. Have fun. Battle, battle to the death.